Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Quantum GIS version 3.4 from the QGIS website. So first of all, we need to go to the Quantum GIS website and we can just put QGIS into your search engine and click on the result. This is the new version of the QGIS website. It looks slightly different, so if you used this website before, don't be alarmed if it looks a little bit different. Um, there's a download up there. You can also click the green download button here. Um, we're going to skip um, the donation. Now, when we click on the download button, the first thing that we see is the download QGIS for your platform. So if you are using a PC, as I am, then the Windows version is the first one that comes up. These are all for Windows, these few here. If you have another operating system, you need to scroll down to other platforms and you've got Linux, um, Mac, uh, various other um, operating systems there and of course the mobile and tablet versions uh, where you can upload it to your uh, Android or your Apple tablet. So if you want Mac, you need to go down to here. This is probably the, the main one that people use apart from uh, Windows on the computer. Now for Mac, you can see there's a long-term version and a latest version. We are always going to be using the long-term version because it's the version that has had the most bug fixes and is unlikely to have um, as many difficulties as you might find on the most recent build. So we're going to use the long-term version for Mac or if you have a Windows computer, the long-term version for Windows. These are the two you're going to need. A quick note, if you are installing for Mac, uh, depending on which Mac operating system you have, you are going to need to tell your Mac that this is a safe program to use. There's some instructions here on the screen at the top for those who have um, Mac operating system 14. That's the one called Sonoma or before, uh, in which case um, when you enable QGIS, you have to command click on its icon in your apps folder and select open in the context menu and then you need to tell it to open again and confirm that you actually do want to open this app. This is their way of making sure you don't accidentally run a malware program. If you have a Mac that is uh, more recent, so this is version 15 or Sequoia and more recent than that, it's a little bit more complicated but it's basically the same process. So you have to command click on the icon in the apps folder again and select open again and then it gives you this warning dialog box and you click done on that um, and then you have to go to your system settings and your privacy and security and then you will see this message that says QGIS was blocked to protect your Mac and you have to click open anyway. Now during this process, depending on how your security is set up for Mac, you may need to enter your password to confirm that you really are you and not a hacker that's got access to your computer. Let's go back to Windows. So I have a PC here, so I'm going to click on the long-term version for Windows in the offline standalone installers section. Uh, so this just allows me to download an installer, which then will install the program on my computer. The download does take some time. If we go up here to where my download is, you can see it reckons it's got about 12 minutes left. And that's going to go up and down. You can see now it says 24, 25, because it's responding to the very specific bandwidth we've got on the Wi-Fi here at the moment. I have got quite fast Wi-Fi and I would encourage you to do this somewhere you have reasonably quick Wi-Fi, otherwise it might say something like up to an hour. So our download has now finished. You can see it's gone to that little download symbol up there. And if we go down to the file explorer and to the downloads folder, we can see there is a QGIS OS Geo installer here. We want to click that to activate it, and you'll see it says preparing to install and you get the setup wizard. Have I got two of them? No, it's just reopened. So you click next and then you have to accept the license agreement, of course. So it will normally tell you where it intends to install QGIS and it's normally on your C drive amongst your program files. 
I have asked it to create a desktop shortcut and a menu shortcut, but normally when I have my QGIS installed, I actually pin it to the taskbar down here for ease of access. Click Next, and then we ask it to install. And it should now just install quite happily for us. It will sometimes ask you if you want to allow this program to make the changes and you can just click yes. So we've now finished the install and if we double click on where it has appeared, we can go to here and open up our QGIS project. So this is a fairly standard GIS frame. You can see it says untitled project because it hasn't been saved. You've got a series of menus at the top, fairly standard for most programs these days. You've got a series of icons which do specific tasks. You've got to save and open a new project. When you first open it up, um, you may see a single blank frame. You may see the news and project templates here and the recent projects. Now, if we just get rid of that, if I go here, just click on new empty project. So now we have replaced all those uh, news items and recent projects with a blank data frame. This is where your data is projected as a map by the GIS. If I go back to browser, you can see we can also look at things on our computer. So this is my external hard drive and this is my internal C drive. If I go to the C drive and I find my users, I'm Hannah, this is my home, this is a little house in there, click on that, go down to documents, there aren't a lot of documents in here because this is a brand new computer, if I go to Delta Survey though, I think we will find there are some things, here we go, Delta Survey Pilot, this is a ArcGIS geodatabase by the way, and it has a number of feature classes in it, but it also contains this shapefile. Now shapefiles are a really crucial form of data for GIS and this one, if we double click on it, it appears in the layers list below where all of the data that you are projecting into your data frame is going to be lined up. And we can see we have a series of spots on the screen and these are a group of ancient Egyptian sites um, in the delta of Egypt, which I was working on for another project. If we go down to the bottom of the screen, you can see we've got coordinates at the bottom. We've got scale um, and we've got magnification. Don't normally need that too much, although you can use it if, if your eyesight's getting a bit poor. I'm using that occasionally myself these days. Um, you've got a rotation. I don't think I've ever used that in like 20 years. And then we have this little EPSG 4326 with a symbol of a world with a hat on it. And this is supposed to symbolize um, the transformation of a ellipsoidal planet into a flat plane. So the, the flat plane is represented by the paper trying to fit over the top of the globe. And this is the projection that we are using um, to project the surface of the planet onto a flat plane. So all of our mapping is obviously flat, but our planet is not, so we have to project it. And the projection is simply um, the specific set of decisions we make about how we're going to manage the error that comes in projecting a ellipsoidal planet onto a flat plane. And there are different projections you can use and you need to pick the right one for the data you're working with. So we'll be discussing that a little bit later. But for now, you just need to know that this is EPSG 4326 and it is the projection that is used by most GPS systems. So it is very commonly used as a default projection in GISs. And you can change this to something else. It's called WGS84. So that's your GIS project and obviously as you add more data you will get more and more layers in here and more things will build up in here.